Hello everybody and welcome to Endless Legend, the start of our cultist series. For those of you who have watched the Vaulter series that pre uh, preceded this one, the last episode ended with a battle that errored out. I tried to go through that again and again I could not play it manually so I was forced to do auto resolves which auto resolved against our favor. So then I tried to load it up again and run away because we weren't going to win that fight but then I was chased down and our army was killed. So. That error kind of messed us up pretty bad, and when you also look at the fact that we could not use the Vaulter's Holy Resource, which is kind of a big deal, I was just kind of fed up with it. I was like, you know what, okay, I'm just going to go on to the Cultists, maybe we'll do the Vaulters again in a later series, but that one error that stopped us from doing that battle manually actually really kind of screwed me over uh, pretty bad. Like, really bad. So I just said, you know what, we're moving on. So here we are to the Cultists. So let's uh, look at them real fast in case you did not see my video that showed them off in the Vaulter campaign. So the cultists, here are their um, unit types here. There we go, they all look kind of kind of cool, very different. Let's go through the traits. So the cultists cannot produce settlers. The only one they have is the one that they start with at the beginning of the game. And they also get plus one district level cap on all of their city tiles. Village of Faith, they get extra city fortification on their main city, and these guys only have one city in the game, which makes them really unique, because when they take over a city, the city is raised! You can't build settlers, and you cannot capture cities, because you raise them to the ground immediately and add their population to your um, industry piles, stockpiles, which is kind of... Funny, uh, you can either think of that maybe you do like forced labor or maybe they have some kind of weird way of converting people into energy, like I don't know. I guess maybe if I read this here. Leaders of the cult insist that enemy cities when taken be turned into usable resource for the cult rather than simply burned to the ground. Alright, so maybe they are taking the bodies, anyway, we, we won't go too deep into that. And conversion, so this is kind of a pretty big thing for the cultists. Since they cannot build any city beyond the one that they start with, this is pretty important. Can convert pacified villages. So, converted villages are lost for their original owner. Give all advantages of a pacified village to the new owner no matter their location. Which means that they don't have to be in the province of your city for you to get their bonuses. So you can spread out across the world and take all these pacified cities and all of those cities, all of their bonuses will go to your main city. Or go to your race. And will exploit fids on their tile and six tiles around for the main city. So this is totally unique to the cultists as well. No other race can have the tile of the pacified village and the tile surrounding it used as exploitable fids that contribute to their cities. Unless that faction builds districts next to the pacified city to take those tiles on their own. So that's really unique. And then a regularly spawned a new unit, not retrofitable for the new owner. So when you convert them, you're going to get a unit of their race, but you can't modify it. So I guess it's like you're forcing their people into your military, I guess. So that's pretty cool. Then those are just their units. You get a main quest, which everyone does have a main quest. Military science, we start out with this. Technology available and unlocked. So, infantry cantina, you get an additional slot for your military, or your militia, I'm sorry, that's the, that's, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, 60 city fortification and plus 0.5 XP per turn on a unit in the garrison. That's kind of cool too. And they start off with language square, which allows them to parlay uh, with minor nations or bribe, so that, that's also kind of cool. Alright, so let's jump into this game. We will manually put in the other races here. And then we'll leave the last one as a random. We're going to jump up, oh, sorry, we're jumping up to 8. We normally play with 6 empires, but we're going to go to 8. I upped the difficulty to impossible. I've been playing on Sirius, but it's been kind of easy, uh, so I'm going to increase that. Uh, world size has been increased. We've done the continents from 2 to 4. Continent shape went from disturbed to chaotic. Temperature is random, topography is random, and world difficulty is going to be hard. So let us start with the cultists. Pretty excited for this. Just such a unique race. Their whole deal is just, you know, build one sprawling city and then expand through pacified villages. Unique. 
Which also means your starting province is kind of important because it's going to be your only one. So you kind of, most of the time you start a game, you pick a spot, you build a city, no big deal because you're going to be expanding to other provinces. But here, you kind of have to look for a really good spot. At the same time, though, well, hold on. The Endless broke us when they broke themselves. Now we are few, and many that remain are of little use. Yet our purpose still drives us. Even death cannot be allowed to stop us. We must find new converts, new servants, who will help us fulfill the great oaths we took so long ago. They will not only be our hands and our eyes, they will be the sword and the shield of our armies that will bring the eternal end. First upon Oraga, and then across the universe. Huh. This is the first race that's ever mentioned anything beyond Origa, the planet that we're playing this on. So that would hint that the cultists actually know about space travel and all of that. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so let's see what we have here. An anomaly, which... That's a pretty good anomaly. We have some ruins. We have rivers, which can be good later on. Let's, I guess, head up here first. And turn on the tiles so we see what we're building. That's really good, but... Hmm... Is that the best spot to start? I gotta be mindful of my uh, money up here. You don't have a whole lot of time to search for a spot. That is tempting, because that is a great anomaly. And I like the rivers that run through this province, because those can really help us. I like the water tiles. We have some industry, some food tiles, dust tiles, some research down here. This isn't too bad. This is not too bad. I, I would kind of hope for some more anomalies, though. Let's take a quick look up here. Minor faction discovered. <sighs> the problem with this spot is that we don't really have much in the way of industry around this tile. Except for these forest tiles here. And then up in here. Hmm. Tell you what, we'll go with this. I'm gonna build our city up here. Our city center will be at the top of this mountain that overlooks this province. I think that's a, kind of a cool spot too. Plus, we need to get there pretty soon because our money is quickly dwindling here. Or should we put it there? No, we'll grab it here. Boom! Warimer. Hmm. You know, I never really changed the name of the cities, but since this is our only one... Hmm. There we go. Oh, I can't do... Um... It only can be letters. Darn. Okay. That's fine. Von Alneon. So this is a city from a world that me and a friend have created, so kind of fits this current situation. I won't go too deep into that, though. Von Alneon. So that also changes the province name, too. I've never really shown this off, but if you change the city, it changes the province name. Again, I never really cared because we had so many cities, but eh, we have the one, so I wanted it to be a little bit more personalized for myself. Alright, so we're going to start with, um, that's the tech we have unlocked. We don't need that yet. We'll start with the Founder's Memorial, which give us a lot of cool stuff. And now, we will do some more exploring of our province that we own here. And let's take a closer look into our hero. Whoa, that just looks so <laughs> weird. Oh my goodness, okay. So what do you have? You have Last Stand, as I think all heroes do. 214 life? 
That is a lot of life. I'm pretty sure that's still a high attack, high defense, and high damage, even for a hero unit at level 1. Yeah, infantry Slayer, block, army health boost of plus 30 life and then plus 10% life to the army. Oh my gosh. And an influence boost of Covenor. Wow, that's, that's pretty strong. This hero is pretty strong. Skill tree. Plus 10 defense on the hero. More life to your units. My goodness. An extra accessory slot. Plus 5 defense on units. Plus 2 reinforcement positions on unit in garrison. Frosted the Snowman. Uh, immunity to the movement reduction during winter on units in garrison. Immunity to the attribute reduction due to winter on unit in garrison. And then level 2, plus 20% defense on units during the winter season. Wow, that's kind of cool. Improves search on ruins. XP on units. Times the recovery speed from the disabled state on the hero. Instant heal on the hero. Wait, we can instant heal on these people? That used to be something only the Broken Lords could do. No way. Uh, let's see. Plus 10% attack on units when being involved in a siege. That's siege stuff. Wow. Wow. That's really good. Whoa! No way. This hero is potentially really strong. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I kind of just want to make you a governor. I mean, look at that. When we get level 2, or level 1, what are we right now? Level 0? Whatever. Next level, I kind of want to grab that and help our city grow. Wow, that's insane. Sorry, that, that hero is pretty darn cool. Uh, but for right now, we will just search around. And we need to assign research. I generally go for this first, but we may not need that because of the anomaly that we got. So instead, let's focus on industry first. So we'll grab that first. Then we'll grab... Food. Go from there. New quest added. Um, so if you want to read the flavor text up here, feel free to do so. There we go. You have to you have work to do to bring these savages into the purpose of their cult. While you train the recruits, you must continue to swell their ranks. Go forth and convert more. Convert two minor faction villages into the cult and we'll gain 80 dust as a reward. That's the start of our main quest line. Alright. Well, first we gotta find some villages to convert. And to do that, we first must pacify them. This is a pretty big province, that's gonna be good. Since it's our only one. Whoa, the Broken Lords. That could be bad that they're so close. Okay. Let's go that way. So now we're in a Cold War state. Well, it's good to meet neighbors, you know? Alright, so we're going to grab that. And I'm going to search this on the way. Search ruins and unearth secrets of the past. Within five turns, search for a relic at the temple ruins illuminated by the rays of dust. Oh, that's so far away. Oh, it's so far away. <laughs> and we don't even know what reward we would get for this. 
I assume some kind of cool item. Can we even make it there in five turns? Yeah, we can. All right, we'll, we'll give it a shot. There's a village there. The Jotus. Right, we already did that. Dismiss. And keep you on food. We'll have them move. Are they chasing us? Like, what's going on there? Mill Foundry. Okay, so Mill Foundry is done. We'll queue that up after the Founder's Memorial. Gold deposit. Hmm. I doubt we have the movement for it. Yeah, we can't move anymore. Oh boy. Two of those already? Please note that you are encroaching on sovereign territory, and I am the sovereign. What? I mean, we're kind of getting close, but... Alright, so, break wall. A shield. Plus 45% attack on unit, plus 10 defense on unit can be equipped by heroes only. Okay. And now we'll search it for a new quest. With the hero-led army, loot as many treasures as you can. Going all the way back up there, that's at least a direction I want to go. But, I also want to try and pacify them on the way. I think we should be able to do that with, um... Our units here, because they have some... Oh, their attack is only 7? Okay, hold on. Let me get a closer look and see what they actually do. I mean, they, they look... <laughs> they look kind of cool, but... Uh, let's see. Unleash potential. Plus 10% attack on unit, plus 10% defense, initiative, damage, and life. So these poor these guys are support units. I guess clearly it does say support right there. So they're only here to buff your other units, which with a pretty darn cool buff, I might add. They themselves, though, with such a low attack, they're not going to really be able to do much damage. And they can also cast slow down on an enemy target. That's a cool support unit. I wonder if these supports would stack, since we have two preachers, if they could target our hero. I'll test it out against these Jotas and see if it works like that. Because I want to pacify them quick. I could parlay, which they would give us a quest and we would pacify them through the doing the quest that they give to us, but I'm, I want it to be quicker than that. Plus I want to try this out. Uh-oh. They have a roving army as reinforcements. That's okay. Their main army is really weak. Oh, that's unfortunate, though, that we have to go through. That's okay. Look at our reinforcement points. Those look cool. What's our movement? Two. Hmm. Okay. So, I want to buff up our hero who has a lot of hit points. And he'll go in there and kill everybody, hopefully. We'll see. And, yeah. I do not think it's stacked. No, you can see the status effects right there. Okay. So you buff up him. Do they at least have a ranged attack? Or are they in melee? No, they had a staff, so they should be ranged. So we'll do that. How long does this last? Two turns? Okay.
Target them. Buff him, yes. And then he should be able to finish him off. I don't know, this is going to be kind of close. This dude has a lot of hit points, but still, like, he's going to be worn down. Oh, I was hoping they would, like, attack these guys. Oh, no, they did zero damage! No, they were supposed to kill them! Well, I guess at least he did. Not good. Not good. Not good at all. No. He's dead. Damn. If it was just the uh, the village, we would have been able to pacify it. Did you not support? He doesn't have that um thing. Oh no, yeah, he does. Oh my god, 60 damage. Okay. This is going to be a pretty big setback. Alright, so it was a draw? It looks like. No winner. So that means... Does he come back to life? If it's a draw? Looks like he does. And this has been pacified? Maybe? We don't have any... We can't attack again because we already did it. Let's, um... End turn. So I was kind of lucky because those guys are short range. Got to auto here. Hmm. So they can only have an attack range of two. They move two. I think the normal range is three. We can't um, actually get up there. Okay. And I need you to hold position. We need to draw them in closer so we can kill them. Alright, so they're probably going to move up to and attack you. And they go first, so I actually cannot stop that. But we can do this. Or they may move one blah blah and then kill him. No, they went for him. Darn it. Minus one. Alright, so their counterattack is probably going to kill the Lord, but we have last stand. We should kill them. So this works out. We lose one preacher for killing four Jotus units. And getting the city. Those creatures are pretty cool, so now we have to wait another turn to actually do that. We get an Empire plan up in six turns. Founder's Memorial is done. Preacher upgraded. So how many hit points do you have now? 81. Excellent. Although we do have that side quest to um, go up here and uh, look at those ruins in like 15 turns, but oh well. 
Oh, we need 40 influence to do that. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't even look at that. Oh, my God. And now they're going to settle this land, I think. I kind of want to stop that from happening. Uh-oh. I didn't realize they had three Star Wars. Auto? Retreat. The opposing troops made a successful retreat. I didn't see those other Star Wars. Okay. Let's just, um... Oh god, I hope we don't get killed by this. They may come at us. Retreat! Retreat! Okay. And they did settle this province. I can still take this from them, I guess, technically. I, I think. Yeah. But I didn't realize I needed that much influence to do so. Can I do it from my Empire screen? Uh, probably not. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, next research. We'll grab the basic dust. We'll grab the basic... That. I guess grab the calf. And let's level this up. Apply. And now that we're kind of out of danger... Well, I want to search this room first, and then we'll assign them as a city governor. Oh, no. Auto. So I don't think we can actually win that. Hey, but the auto won. Haha. -ha. I'll take it. Got 10 moon leaf. Now it wants us to go way over there, which is not going to happen. Thirty dust, and now we will unassign this hero and assign him to this city. Very good, very good. All right, and that's going to do it for the first episode for our look at the cultist, our our cultist campaign. Hopefully, we can snag that city at some point. I still need to actually find the minor faction for this province. I I guess they're up here. We'll look for them soon, and I will see you all next time. Take care.